Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Monday, the 26th of September, 2016. Obviously, the big story this week will be what happens with 97L down here, eventually going to become Tropical Depression 14, and shortly after that, more than likely, Tropical Storm Matthew, as it moves in this general direction over the next several days. The first area of impact will be these uh, Windward Islands, and we'll talk about that in just a moment in more detail. Here is the system starting to come together nicely. Upper-level anticyclonic flow really starting to show itself. The lower-level cyclonic turning, much more evident now, banding of the showers and thunderstorms. And this is well on its way to becoming our next tropical depression. Notice, too, how large this system is. It's not a very small, like here's the leftovers of Lisa, for example. This is a much larger area of influence in the tropics, pulling in energy over a large area. And therefore, as I mentioned in my blog today, focusing on where any potential center develops and tracks, just as an example, if this red line were to be the center of the system and it tracked right along that center, you say, oh, I'm up here in Barbados, I don't have to worry about it, yay. Um, no, <laughs> that would be incorrect. Because, look, half of the circulation up here would move right over you. So we have to focus on the impact of the overall system and, and not the center of circulation with something like this. Because unless it's a hurricane and a well-developed one at that, the center of circulation doesn't matter that much. And really it only matters in the intense hurricanes uh, because that's where, you know, around the core, the worst of the winds usually are. In a larger, sprawling, developing system like this, you could have tropical storm conditions spreading over a fairly large area well away from where that center were to track. So let's just keep that in mind, all right? So the vorticity signature of it right here, the spin in the atmosphere, increasing. Remember, this came all the way from Africa and has made it all the way to this point, gradually getting better organized as it has done so. Here's an, a look at those upper-level winds fanning out in a clockwise fashion. And it's all systems go for this to develop. No impediments to really see in its path. Maybe if it interacts with the north coast of South America, we'll have to see about that. And then, of course, if it gets hung up over any of these islands over here, but that's farther down the road, we can talk about that when and if the time comes. Upper ocean heat content, the very warm water not only at the surface, but extending deep below, very high across the western Atlantic Basin right now. And this system will be moving into increasingly warmer and deeper warm water. And therefore, lots of energy for it to tap into. So let's take a look at the morning run of the GFS. I'm only going to go out to five days. Many of you already know about the differences in the models as of late. Some of them want to take this as the GFS does kind of up and out and then maybe back, very strange. Uh, the European model kind of dives it into South America, comes up so, you know, towards southeast Cuba. Other models are in between, some are in the Bahamas. The ensemble prediction system has some of the models way over here. So there's a lot of uncertainty, basically uh, anywhere from Cape Cod all the way down to Central America and even Texas. You just want to watch it. You know, should you be concerned? No, not yet. But you just want to keep an eye on it. If somebody told you that there was a large tiger roaming around your neighborhood, you know, you certainly want to look out the window and keep an eye on it. See if that tiger comes into your yard. And that's about the extent of it. Not much else you can do, right? I think that works as a good analogy here. So really the first area that we want to focus on will be the Lesser Antilles and specifically the Windward Islands. So with all that being said, here's the forecast. 24 hours out, valid tomorrow morning, Tuesday the 27th. And there it is in the 850 millibar vorticity, uh, showing up pretty good. And you can see the outline of the big ridge of high pressure here, keeping it squashed down to the south. Moving out to 48 hours, it starts to increase in its vorticity signature, showing me that it's getting healthy. The ridge nice and thick out here, these different height lines very similar to a topographic map that the more height lines you have the thicker the ridge of high pressure is now over here you have a lot of these different height lines but they're going the other way this is lower pressure think of this as a hole 
in the ground or the atmosphere, and this is a big mountain, kind of like in geology. You have rivers and valleys and mountains and uh, canyons, and those are represented with contour lines, and the uh, atmosphere is very similar with that. And there's our system moving south of this very large area, stout area of higher pressure. So it keeps it pushed to the south. It doesn't turn up through it, at least not yet. <clears throat> and so that's why this looks like it will approach the Windward Islands. Then at 72 hours, still forming uh, fairly significantly in the model field. But here's this sort of path that's trying to open up over here to the west as this area of lower pressure comes in and sort of bangs on the western side of this uh, strong subtropical Atlantic ridge out here. And that's going to have implications as to where this ends up after day five. Moving out to 96 hours, lots and lots of vorticity signature showing up here. Uh, basically, when you see that, it becomes sort of a black ball on this resolution anyway. You, you know that we are looking at an intensifying system. And so folks in the Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao area, the ABC Islands, just north of South America, this could be very problematic for you. And then finally, day five still intensifying here and kind of trying to figure out what's going to be happening with the ridge out here. This is going to be the big turning point between day five and seven. The GFS, again, wants to take it across um, Hispaniola, splitting it right down the middle and then basically out to sea and then it tries to turn it back. It's just bizarre. And other models bring it much more to the west with time. No way to even worry about it right now. It's more than five days out. Yes, you want to keep an eye on it if you're in Florida, if you're in the Greater Antilles, Jamaica, the Bahamas, the Carolinas, the Yucatan. I mean, it's hurricane season. It's out there. I won't say it again. You just need to watch it, all right? I don't know where it's going to go. I really wish I did, trust me. It would make my planning a lot easier, for one, and certainly would make it easier for everybody else. But unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. Now, let me go to the higher resolution of the GFS uh, map version here that I can show you how this system tracks into the Caribbean. There is Barbados. In fact, let me jump over here and show you a map so you can get geographically oriented. Barbados, the easternmost island here. And then you have Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, and finally Trinidad and Tobago. And so with all that being said, let's take a look at what happens. You remember all that? There's uh, Barbados, the uh, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and Grenada down here, Trinidad and Tobago. So where's the system? Well, this is the very first frame, so let's just move it on out into time. And you'll see, as I go through, it's going to come in here from the east, all right? So here we go, and watch as it comes in Tuesday into Wednesday. There it is. You can just start to see the reflection of it, that vorticity energy showing up there on the right-hand side. So finally, by Wednesday morning, it starts to come into the frame, <clears throat> and this shows me you know, a fairly decent organized system almost right on top of Barbados there. And remember that the overall area of influence is fairly large. So anywhere in that circle could see some pretty squally weather, the red circle that I drew. And then anything closer to the center, yeah, you know, if it's getting organized, the winds might be higher. But anywhere south of Guadalupe here, uh, and then down to Trinidad and Tobago, you might see approaching tropical storm conditions. Certainly squally weather, rough seas, uh, heavy rain at times, and then you see it moves right on through uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, just north of Grenada. Uh, here is Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, maybe it's, you know just enough influence there from the weather to bring some squalls to your region along the northeast coast of South America even. Especially, remember, go back and look at this, how large that is. If you take that and you put it right here, yeah, you see, that's a pretty large area that could be impacted from this. And then it moves on into the Southeast Caribbean and starts to get stronger. All right. So first up, windwards. And you guys better be ready. You know that the very heavy rainfall in and of itself can be problematic. On top of that, an intensifying system probably going to have gustier winds because of that. As the energy gets transferred to the surface more efficiently in an intensifying system. And then from there, 
it moves into the uh, Caribbean, and we're going to have to just wait and see what happens, folks. There's no easy answer, unfortunately, and we'll just have to see together, all right? As I said in my blog, how does the story end? I guess we'll all find out together. I'll certainly be on top of it. Uh, I will do another blog post on HurricaneTrack.com tonight, later tonight, uh, probably in the 10 o'clock hour Eastern time. And then, of course, an early morning blog post tomorrow, and then the cycle will continue with video discussions as needed throughout the week ahead. All right? So interesting times for sure. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it, and I'll be back with a lot more for you tomorrow.